right, students. Today it's time for yet another active learning strategy. And this one is called Across the Room. Now you get exposed to a lot of different information throughout the course of the day. You learn about history. You have an integrated language arts curriculum you're exposed to every day. Science. Math and geography. And that's just scratching the surface. Many other disciplines beyond that. For this strategy, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get you up and out of your seats and moving across the room. You will move in accordance with a statement that I make. If you agree with that statement, you will physically walk from one side of the room to the other. If you disagree, you will stay put. But either way, you have to be prepared to defend why it is you stayed put or why it is you moved across the room. I'm trying to get all of you to think for yourselves. Should we give it a try? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All right, I have a list of questions that I'm about to read. But before I get to those questions, we have to move the desks. So I'm going to ask you to gently Lift and slide. I would like these three rows to slide your desk against the wall there. And I would like these two rows to gently slide your desk up in the corner here. Go ahead. All right, students, to energize your thinking, I'm going to begin by asking a question that I think all of you will have an opinion on. Now remember, you stay put if you disagree. If you agree, you physically cross to the opposite side. Please be gentle and don't knock anybody down as you go across the room. All right, here is the first question. There should be an age restriction on video games. I'm not saying what it is, but I'm just saying there should be age restrictions on video games. If you agree with that statement, cross the room. If you disagree, stay put. But either way, be prepared to defend why it is you are where you are. Go ahead and move. All right, Patrick, I'm going to start with you. And you moved across the room, so that means you agree there should be some restrictions. Why do you feel like there should be some restrictions? Uh, because if you have like these little kids playing video games with monsters and like guns and stuff, they might think that it's okay to do that in like real life. Okay, I think that's a great answer. If they're playing these games that are very violent, he's saying that they might think it's okay in real life to do that. And obviously we know it isn't. It's a great answer. Can we give a little something on that? Yeah. All right, who stayed put over here on this side? All right, Chu Yi. Chu Yi didn't move. Uh, tell us, why don't you think there should be restrictions on video games? Well, I know when I was younger, I never wanted to wait like to be a certain age to play a game. I've always wanted to like be a part of something, so I don't want to wait like two years to play video games. I'd rather just play it like there. All right, that's a great point. You know. How many times as young adults have you been in situations where other people are doing these things because they're a little bit older and you can't? For instance, it's Thanksgiving and mom and dad, aunts and uncles, grandma and grandpa are all at the big table and you're sitting at the little, little table. table. And you're like, what's the difference? They're a little older, who cares? Traditional methods of instruction, including lecture, notes on the chalkboard, and large group discussion, may only engage a few of our students. This strategy works wonderfully on a variety of topics, specifically when utilizing true and false and opinion-based statements. You will be pleasantly surprised by the increased participation from every student. Once your students have gently pushed their desks or tables to the side of the room, have them form two fairly equal rows facing one another and then explain to the students you will be making a series of statements. If they agree, they move across the room. If they disagree, they stay put. 
Either way, the students are expected to explain their positions. After receiving a few responses, I am ready to move on. Students do not need to return to their original positions as you begin the next statement. All right, students, I have a great science question for you. Scientists are constantly making inroads because of their ability to map the human genome. But essentially what it says is this. Couples are able to determine more and more traits of their children because of this genetic engineering. If they wanted their children to look a certain way or be a certain height, they're able to do that. And I want to know, is that okay? Should we be doing genetic engineering? So here's the statement, and you're going to move across the room depending upon how you feel about it. If you move across the room, you agree. If you stay put, you disagree. All right, here's the question. Should couples be allowed to determine the traits of their future children? Don't move yet, I'll say it again. Should couples be allowed to determine the traits of their future children? If you think they should, you agree and you're gonna move across the room. If you disagree, stay put. Everybody thinking? All right, go ahead and move. Okay, Jacob, I'm going to ask you, why did you move across the room? Well, because I thought that there should be people, if they can change, they should be able to and want the kids to be healthy. So Yours is about healthy children that aren't sick with some of these terrible diseases that society has. Yep. Great. That was fun. Who else moved across the room? All right, Courtney, can you tell us why you moved? Um, I moved because I agree it would be okay, but only for like health and not. And some of the diseases I think your kids should get, like the cold and chicken pox, so that way they can build up their immune system against it. But for cancer or leukemia, I guess I can see how you would want it to be prevented. But if you're going to use it for making a copy of Brad Pitt or Angela, Angelina Jolie, I don't think it should be allowed. Great answer. Thank you. Derek, during the across the room strategy, I noticed you shook your head saying, you don't think that parents should determine your traits before you're born. Can you mm -hmm. speak to that? Yeah, because I don't think it's fair that your parents get to decide what you're gonna be when you grow up, like if you're gonna be tall, short, you know, skinnier, fatter, like athlete or non-athlete, smart or, you know, not smart or something. I just don't think it's fair. As with other strategies, learning vast amounts of curricular content while laughing along the way is a magnificent combination. I enjoy incorporating a few less intellectually challenging questions or statements to break things up and to re-energize my students and their thinking. Appropriate questions and statements relating to their movies, music, and general pop culture always bring about numerous smiles. You might be surprised how something silly can be related right back to something serious within your curriculum. On occasion, I will have some students that stutter step because of the conflict they are having within themselves. When I notice this behavior, I am quick to move them into the middle of the two rows for an explanation of their thoughts. As with all active learning strategies, I may have students that are reluctant to participate. I encourage them to be part of the activity, but after a good-hearted try, I let them remain seated. I respectfully explain if they are not going to participate, they should not expect to sit together and disrupt the strategy. I direct them into seats around the room and away from one another. I also ask reluctant students for feedback relating to a student response. As always, first, I'm trying to empower them academically, even if physically they will not stand and move. It is my sincere hope that one will eventually lead to the other. And now I would like you to meet my friend Ryan. Ryan is a relatively new teacher and a past student teacher of mine. Here he gives an integrated language arts example on how to effectively use the across the room strategy. Then, I will provide a few more examples. We've just had the opportunity to finish Chapter 7 in The Giver by Lois Lowry, and it's been an excellent book so far. 
Something I noticed in this chapter is how strict and rigid the rules are for this society. Even to the point that when rules are broken, even small ones, people begin to feel uneasy and uncomfortable. So what I thought we'd do today is I thought we'd use our across the room strategy to take this topic and connect it a little bit to our society and our world. You should follow every single rule in society. If you agree with that statement, I want you to move across the room. You should follow every single rule in society. Uh, basically, I think that if you break the little rules, you'll end up breaking rules that are just a little bit worse than those. And then you'll end up breaking rules that are really bad and uh, just keep on progressing like that. Okay. So what you're saying is kind of a snowball effect. You break a small rule when you're younger, maybe being quiet in class, which isn't that big of a deal if you break that rule. But it leads on to bigger things and bigger things and bigger things. And eventually you may break a rule that even gets you in trouble with the law. Real good point. Oh, I disagree with the statement because that because of people break the law, police officers have jobs, and if everyone obeyed the law, then police officers wouldn't be employed, and there'd be a lot less jobs. Hey, that's a great point. Um, because we have these rules, and people break them, we need people uh, to work to make sure people follow through those rules. So it does create jobs. Give them a little something, something. All right, students. I'm really going to make you think with this one. It relates to the great oceans. And here it is. If we didn't have all those sponges on the ocean floor, okay, again, if we didn't have all those sponges on the ocean floors, then the water would be much deeper than it currently is. If you agree with that statement, I want you to move across the room. If you disagree, I want you to stay put. Go ahead and move. America should play the role of the world's police officer. Go ahead. Interesting. War is never justified. War is never justified. Go ahead. X plus 5 equals 5 if X equals 0. Go ahead. Great. 3 squared plus 2. Are you thinking? 3 squared plus 2 equals 7. All right, great job. What's the answer? 11. Correct. Periodically, I like to remind my students that perseverance is key. If they work hard and are passionate about the work they are doing, they generally can expect a positive result. Unfortunately, our society seems obsessed with the notion of quicker and easier. For instance, if I am hungry, I don't need to wait. I can get fast food. Or I can prepare a microwavable meal in less than 60 seconds. Should I need to pick me up in the morning, I can make a cup of instant coffee. If I'm in need of a little extra money, well, there are plenty of infomercials and other schemes that will teach me how to get rich quick. Despite these mixed messages of quicker is better and hurry up and get it done, I believe it is more important than ever to challenge our students to be thoughtful and reflective as they set goals for themselves. Again, I continually remind my students that perseverance is key.